All right, I'm going to show you how to do operations with complex numbers. These are the problems that you need to be able to do by the end. Okay, so there's a few different things that we're doing when we're dealing with operations with complex numbers. The first thing is just adding and subtracting. So complex numbers means that you have a rational number and an a imaginary number, something like this. If I'm adding to this, this other guy right here, you're just combining like terms. So 4 plus 6 equals 10, 2i plus 3i equals 5i. And that's it. That's all you're doing. So sometimes they'll put them in parentheses. When it's, a, when it's a addition, the parentheses don't really matter. So you're just going to follow the process the same. 3 plus 2 is 5. Negative 6i plus 2i is negative 4i. And that's your answer. Now when it's subtraction, it's a little bit different. So what I'm going to do when it's subtraction is I'm going to change this to a plus and change the sign of everything on the inside. Now since it's plus, the parentheses don't matter. Essentially what I did is I distributed the negative sign. Okay, So this becomes 3 minus 2 is 1. Negative 6 plus negative 2 is negative 8. I. And that's what you're looking at. So anytime I'm dealing with a subtraction, I'm just going to distribute the minus sign Change this to a plus, change the sign of both of these. So now it's 4 minus 6 is negative 2, 2i plus 3i is 5i. Now with multiplication, you do something slightly different. So with multiplication, what we're going to do is we're going to actually FOIL this out. 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 2i is 6i. Negative 6i times 2 is negative 12i. Negative 6i times 2i is negative 12i squared. Now this is where it comes a little bit confusing. So these I can combine. 6 minus 6i. Remember that i equals the square root of negative 1. So if I square that, I'm also squaring this. And that cancels out. So this part right here is the same thing as negative 12 times negative 1, which is going to be plus 12. So since this is plus 12, I can do 6 plus 12 is 18 minus 6i. And this is my final answer. Do another one that's like that, okay? 4 plus 2i times negative 6 plus 3i. So I'm going to FOIL it. This is going to give me negative 24. This is going to give me plus 12i. This is going to give me minus 12i. And this is going to give me plus 6i squared. Remember that i squared equals negative 1. These guys are going to cancel each other out. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6, so this is going to be negative 30. That's the final answer. Okay? What we really need to get used to is the powers of i. i equals the square root of negative 1. i squared equals negative 1. This squared just cancels out the square root. i to the third equals these two multiplied together or negative square root of negative 1, which we would also call negative i. i to the fourth equals this times itself, or i squared times i squared. Well, i squared is negative 1 times negative 1 equals positive 1. So we want to think of it in terms of i. In other words, we want to think of it as cycles of 4, OK? So what that means is if I have i to the fifth, that's the same thing as i to the fourth times i. Well, i to the fourth is 1. So this is the same thing as i. So the real cycle that we want to think of it is i to the power of 1 equals i. i to the power of 2 equals negative 1. i to the power of 3 equals negative i. i to the power of 4 equals 
one. And it's going to be that same cycle over and over and over. So what I want you guys to do is to divide and look for the remainder. So if I have something like i to the 114, well, let's make it 1014. I'm going to divide this by 4. 1014 divided by 4. 4 goes into 10 two times with 8. Subtract it down gives me 21. Goes into that 5 times with 20. Subtract it down gives me 1. Bring the 4 down. Goes into 14 3 times with 12. So I have a remainder of 2. In other words, this is i to the power of 4 253 times, which is just 1. 1 to the power of 253 is still just 1. And remember that i to the 4 equals 1. So this is gone. What I'm left with is i to the power of 2, whatever that remainder is. i to the power of 2 is negative 1, so this equals negative 1, which means this also equals negative 1. So you want to divide it by 4 and look for the remainder. So I'll do another one right here. It doesn't matter what the number is. I'm just going to make up any number in the whole entire world. i to the power of 1,796. Well, 1,796 divided by 4. 4 goes into 17 4 times with 16. Subtract that gives me 1. Bring the 9 down. It's going to go into that 4 times as well with 16. Subtract that gives me 3. Bring the 6 down. It's going to go into 36 9 times with 36. Subtract that and it gives me 0. That means that there is no remainder. So this is the same thing as i to the power of 4 449 times with no remainder. Well, i to the power of 4 is 1. Since there's no remainder, this equals the number 1. Okay? So that's what we're looking at. Last one. Going to do the same thing. 253 divided by 4. 4 goes into 25 6 times with 24. Subtract it. Gives me 1. Bring the 3 down. Goes into that 3 times with 12. Subtract it. Gives me 1. So I have a remainder of 1. i to the power of 1 is just i. So this equals i. And that's it. Final solution. So that's what we're looking to do on all of these. Okay? The last thing for these is when we have an i on the denominator of a fraction. We don't want that, and we're not going to allow it. So the way that you can cancel this out is to multiply this denominator by its complex conjugate. That will get rid of my i. The complex conjugate, remember, is just the opposite sign of the i. Whatever you multiply the denominator by, you also have to multiply the numerator by. And I'm just going to put everything in parentheses so I don't get confused. So 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times negative 4i is negative 24i. 2i times 2 is 4i. 2i times negative 4 is negative 8i squared. Remember that i squared is negative 1. So this part right here is the same thing as plus 8. So 12 plus 8 is 20. Negative 24i plus 4i is negative 20i. On the denominator, we're going to get 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times negative 4i is minus 8i. 4i times 2 is plus 8i. 4i times negative 4i is negative 16i squared. Remember that this is just going to change the sign. So this is going to be 4, these cancel out, plus 16, which is going to be 20. So since you have a 20 here and a 20 here, you can simplify this by saying 1 minus i. You got to divide both of these. And that's your answer. Do one more example like this. If I have something like 2 plus 5i over 5 minus 4i, the complex conjugate of this denominator is going to be 5 plus 4i. Whatever I multiply the denominator by, I also have to multiply the numerator by. So I'm going to put this in parentheses. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 4i is 8i. 5i times 5i is 25i. 5i times 4i is going to be 20i squared, which is going to equal negative 20. So 10 minus 20 is negative 10. 8i plus 25i is going to be 33i. 5 times 5 is going to be 25. 
5 times 4i is going to be 20i. Negative 4i times 5 is negative 20i. Negative 4i times 4i is negative 16i squared. Remember that i squared changes the sign, so that's the same thing as plus 16. 25 plus 16 is going to be 41. 20i minus 20i cancels out. These I can't simplify, so this is my final answer. Hope that makes sense.